Let's start by bringing you some path breaking tech technology really all happening here in country. If validated, this test is set to change the way we test, detect and treat cancer. Imagine cancer being detected not when it's too late but when it's even before the formation of a tumor. No pet scans but a simple blood test. This is Tizar Labs. They have the patent on this particular test. Their Indian arm, that the arm is called Epigenerus. They've done clinical trials on 1,000 people in India. Now they are still awaiting a double binder test that will allow them to get larger global validation. But if validated, this made in India test that we're going to be focusing on on the show that could change the way the world looks at cancer. Now there is a lot that has been said about this test in the medical circles already so we decided to do a deep dive here's a ground report Cancer the second largest killer in the world 10 million people died of cancer in 2020 every sixth death globally is because of cancer yet it remains a black box what causes cancer what makes it spread what makes it come back there is still so much we do not know what we do know however is that if detected early cancer is a weak disease and can be fought now there is a test claiming to do just that detect cancer early as early at stage 0 meaning even before the tumor is formed it's also said to be a simple blood test that will give you all the answers It sounds revolutionary and is happening here in India so let's go and find out more Let me start off with my bold claims right and then I'll tell you exactly why this is different uh there are three global firsts that we claim this is the first all cancer blood test and I say this with some understanding of the subject there are 200 different types of cancer 3000 subtypes we detect all of them from a blood sample but not just that we can detect it earlier than known technologies because we can detect it when it is still pet negative that's technically stage 0 not stage 1 hmm. at this stage not only can we tell you that you're at imminent threat of cancer meaning within the next 6 months or so or a year you will actually be forming a tumor we can tell you from a blood test which one we can tell you this is breast this is ovarian this is lung straight from a blood test that's claim 1 claim 2 this is the first prognostic test So we get a reading for non-cancer, and if you're in a safe zone, we can tell you that you're not at risk of cancer for the next one year, because we know the pace at which these markers grow. Mm. So if you're in a safe zone, we know that the fastest cancer doesn't go from here to a tumor stage in one year. You see the use case; it's like a blood test. All of us need to do once a year, and we either catch cancer at stage one or before when it is infinitely more curable. Mm. Claim three, and this is an important one for oncologists. we can tell you the somatic mutations the dysfunctional pathway readings mm. that you typically get from a biopsy of a tumor tissue we could give it to you from a blood sample mm. Mm. that is ashish tripathi chairman of epigenas biotech private limited a drug company that claims to have gotten lucky they say while making a cancer drug they accidentally found a particular kind of stem cell that reacted to the cancer drug these stem cells were changing epigenetically and turning into cancer stem cells and a billion of these cancer cells were turning into tumor this they believe is a major breakthrough today the way we confirm cancer is with a pet scan what is a pet scan radioactive glucose are injected into my cell because the tumor is growing so fast it wants the sugar and now because it's radioactive right when i do a scan it lights up there's a, so an invisible disease which you could not see now becomes visible there's a tumor here there's a tumor here right the problem is that why is a billion cells important because a pet scan does not detect cancer unless you reach a certain size We decided to give it a try and visited the lab and took the test. It was indeed just like any other blood test. 
So I just gave my blood sample and now we are inside the Epigena's lab. It's the only one in India and right here in this Mumbai lab is where the path breaking tech, the methodology, the test was actually discovered for the first time. Now scientists over here are hard at work to scale it up, meaning more tests to be done in lesser time. For this, they have to do something very, very hard. Isolate that stem cell from the rest of the blood cells and do it in record time to get that exact cancer marker. So let's go in and find out from the scientists how that's really going. How long does it generally take for you to separate uh, the stem cells, that specific stem cell from the rest? So uh, very precise, uh, precisely answer like three to four hours it takes hmm. and uh, these cells are very tiny and you cannot see with the naked eye. So How uh, tiny? So it's a, it's a two to eight micron hmm. and the separating from the blood uh, is uh, crucial because the, in the blood there the other cells are present like the lymphocytes, hmm. their size is also the four micron, six micron. Yeah. So that's why this enrichment process and the separation process is very crucial. The tech is revolutionary. But after Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes fraud, the medical world is wary of another blood test promising it all and wants to be thorough. Just to be more specific here, you had 1000 people, 500 had cancer, 500 did not have cancer. Right? And now, now a few of them were in that elevated range, hmm. right, in the 6 to 10, which is what we call moderate risk. We did follow those patients and we proved that they actually developed cancer. To do so all these thousand were Indian? This thousand patient study was completely Indian, which is why we have two studies going on with NHS, one with a grant from NHS. How long will that take? The, both the results are going to be out in Q2, so by June. Was there any downside to these tests at all? So look, the argument is mental anguish, hmm. right? And that's what they will actually tell you. If you look at our test and if you look at the study, we actually had a marker for imminent cancer, but our uh, uh, you know, regulatory bodies and lawyers have actually advised us not to claim imminent cancer, right? Just call it moderate risk. We spoke with top oncologists in India to get their view. Uh, the validation of 1,000 patients is impressive, no doubt. But for something like this, we clearly need a lot more evidence globally and all over the world. On one side, I must say that when such 100% number comes, we all get doubts. It, let it come out in the real world domain. And when the real world data emerges, we'll be confident that yes, it works. But as of today, we're in a good spot. And the tech is path breaking, the possibilities endless. If this test were to get global validation, it would change the definition of cancer as we know it. How COVID is now just a flu? Imagine cancer being just a blood test. For now, all eyes on how cancer research organizations across the globe respond to it. And we'll keep our eyes on that. For now, with camera person Prakash, Rajesh and Manas, this is Sonal Merotra Kapoor signing off. Alright, so that is all you really need to know about the test, but I'm sure you have lots of questions. So do we. That story wasn't enough. So we brought in uh, the founders, the CEOs, and sitting with me is now the MD of Epigeneris. Anish Tripathi is here with us in the studio. Please don't confuse with his face for a lot of people watching. The Tripathi family is quite an accomplished uh, you know, family. <laughs> And there's one very famous uh, author we might know or not know about who's also from there. So that's, <laughs> that's just to put things in context. But Anish, coming back to this very fascinating thing that you guys are doing at Tizar and Epi uh, Generous. When we were doing the story, the thing that came to my mind constantly was that this has to be A, scaled up, available to a lot of people, and thus the question of pricing. What is the pricing looking at at the moment? So today the test is available for uh, 10,000 rupees plus GST in India mm. and uh, it is a you know, test based on uh, molecular biology. Mm. Uh, there are genetic markers, uh, it's a genetic test. Uh, so there are some strong underlying costs which are uh, a part of this test. Mm. 
as we scale and automate, which is really what my job is because I come from a mechanical engineering background, uh, the cost will come down. But this will come down to say 8,000 rupees, 7,000 rupees. Mm. It will never become a 500 rupee test, right? Mm. So there is that element of cost. So the way we look at it is that those who can afford to pay should pay because it's a once in a year test that you need to do, like an annual health checkup. Those who can't afford to pay, we should have facilitating mechanisms for them to be able to uh, get access to a test like this. So we can talk about CSR funds, we can talk about foundations. We have tied up with a couple of companies who said that they'll make this test available to their employees, yeah. right? So there are various ways in which it can be uh, done, uh, which should be done. And sure. as we scale, that's what we see will happen, yeah. Sure. Anish, let's just talk a little bit about you and the family behind it. You're all from different sectors, as you just said, and you've all jumped into this business. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so my sister, Bhavna, uh, mm -hmm. my younger brother, Amish, who's uh, a famous author, and Sonal was just talking about him. Uh, we are all part of it, and Ashish, my younger brother, He's the one who jumped into this first. He is the chairman of the company and the CEO of the Singapore company. Uh, so all four of us have got into it because uh, there is a stronger purpose which seems to be driving us, which is why we have got into it. And we all bring something different to the table. Uh, Bhavna actually went through the whole process of cancer when my brother-in-law, Himan Shuroi, uh, suffered from this disease. Mm. Amish is a marketing genius, as we know. Uh, Ashish comes from a finance, business and strategy background. I'm an operations and technical person. So we just happen to have a lot of the core skills within the family, which the company could benefit from. Mm. Uh, so we've, we've jumped into it, but the primary reason was, the way I came into it, uh, was when we reached a stage when Ashish came, Ashish and Amish both came to me and said that, uh, they, I'm their elder brother, so they called me Dada. Mm. So they said, Dada, it has reached a stage where uh, we need all hands on deck, right, to be able to push this. Uh, the primary research was done by my dad, and uh, we used to call him, on a lighter note, we used to call him like the mad scientist in Back to the Future. <laughs> so we didn't know whether something would come out of it. And mm. then when we realized that something profound is coming out of it, mm. uh, we all jumped into the fray, but we complement each other uh, very well. And yeah. we're a very close family, so it has just very smoothly transitioned into the work environment. I saw a glimpse of that and I must say it is quite beautiful how it's all in the family and everybody is <laughs> sort of coming together. But talk to us a little bit more about the name of the test. You know, the test is called for the benefit of our viewers as well. It's called HRC test. It actually comes from Himan Shu Roy cancer yeah, test. Yeah. He's your brother-in-law yes. who lost his battle to cancer. And that's what's got you guys into it. We're running some pictures as we speak to see that family, uh, you know, on the screen. So this is, in a way, a dedication or yes. what is it? So we've named the test in honor of Himanshu. Uh, his cancer record after 16 years, he fought stage 4 cancer for two years. And then those of you who are Bombayites would, would know what happened. Uh, the decision that he uh, took. We were, like you are aware, we were a drug company and we were looking at anti-aging and anti-cancer both. We got into diagnostics because at the end of the day, I say that any family which gets impacted by this disease, it changes you. Yeah. You become half a doctor yourself because you just want to know what the hell happened, why did it happen, why does it occur, why is it such a dangerous disease. So when you get into it, so it kind of drove us and I think uh, the gift that Himanshu gave us was that we all think about it, Ashish and I particularly because we are more operationally involved in the company, that the test didn't come up in time to be able to help Himanshu. Mm. But the uh, thing which he inspired us to do will make a difference to the lives of a lot of people. Mm. Because while uh, screening is something that people normally talk about, uh, this test is a God's gift to cancer survivors. Uh, mm. Cancer survivors, I don't know if you recall an old movie called Children of a Lesser God. Mm. Uh, cancer survivors are like that. Yeah. Nobody advises them perfectly. Mm. They're just told to do a PET scan once in a year. This test is a godsend for them because if they live with the risk of recurrence. Uh, so it's like a Democles sword hanging over their head. Mm. So if they can get the benefit of doing recurrence risk assessment, it's actually... Without damaging. Without damaging yeah. because PET scan is harmful as yes. we are all aware. Mm. Uh, so that's really what drives us and which is why it's called Himanshu Roy uh, Cancer Test because we believe it's a gift from above. 
uh, there's no reason why an engineer like me should be talking to the best doctors in the world mm -hmm. uh, or an MBA like Ashish should be talk doing the same. Yeah. But we just are. <laughs> so, Anish, really break this down for our viewers. Uh, so, exactly what's happening in the test itself. The test helps you tell uh, which forms of cancer you might be more susceptible to. But is there a time frame of sorts that you're told once the results come out of, okay, over the next three years, you suggest get tests every six months to see? Like, what does one do once they get the results? Okay. So... HRC is a test which we position as a risk assessment test, okay? So, uh, I love analogies because it helps people understand. Right. So, I say that HRC is like a thermometer for cancer, right? So, like a thermometer tells you you have fever and then you determine whether and when to go and do a blood test so that you know, can determine whether you have dengue malaria or something like that, right? So, HRC is like a thermometer for cancer. It tells you that everything is okay or things are not okay but we're not sure or things are not okay and it has connections with cancer. It's stage zero, right? right. So that's what HRC is able to do. Hmm. The process of detection or confirmation of the diagnosis will still be done through the traditional means of PET scan, biopsy, etc. But what HRC is able to do is to tell you that now you need to go and get a PET scan done, for example, right? So that's the trigger. So we envision this like an annual health checkup that all of us in the world should do once in a year. So if you're blessed and you will never have anything to do with cancer, fantastic. But if unfortunately one is destined to get it, then we should catch it early because that makes a huge difference. So we say HRC is a test for occurrence risk assessment, which means for screening purposes, and recurrence risk assessment if a cancer survivor is going right. to get it again. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's what this is positioned for. So this is not a predictive test. Mm -hmm. It's not a uh, test which tells you you're predisposed towards it. It gives you the 12 to 18 month window that you have in what is called stage zero before stage one occurs. And if we test it within that period, we can track the journey which a person unfortunately might be on towards early stage one. And the end goal that yeah. we have is that if we can change the place at which cancer is detected, which globally is at stage two, stage, uh, stage three, stage four, 50% of cancers get detected at that. So our vision is that, say, 80% get detected in early stage one. Yeah. And if that happens, it will make a material but difference to the lives. All of this will depend on how uh, the global uh, sort of validation comes on this, how these cancer organizations actually look at it. Like we said, it's a clinical trial on a very small group, just 1,000 people in India. It needs a much larger group for it to actually do that test. But uh, thank you, Anish, for joining us, and good luck with thank everything so that you guys are doing at DZAR. Thank you so much. Thanks. Pleasure. Okay.